I'm here with Coach Tim Holmes, and, and Coach, you always say that you're grumpy after a win, and I got to tell you that your last win made me grumpy. <laughs> How'd you feel about that game? So now you're starting to understand how I feel about it. I do, I do. That one was just past grumpy. It was bordering on anger. That's the first time I walked off the field and didn't speak to the team afterwards. It wasn't because of anything that they did. It was I'm frustrated because I'm not getting them to play at the level that I'm accustomed to having them play at. So I'm doing things, tinkering with little things, trying to figure out how to get that level of execution out of them. And I'll get there. It's just that was that one made me grumpy. We should have. We legitimately should have put 55 points on the board in there, and to fall that short was just frustrating for me. It, it, you know, it was too. You watch the game, I in 22 to nothing. You think, oh my God, you guys must have slaughtered them. But there were just you guys never felt like you really got on a roll. Now you also had a wicked travel schedule. You guys left what 5:30 in the morning on the bus. Yeah. Do you think that had a lot to do with it? Um, I think this whole stretch there. It was, I don't know. I mean the. You can only play with the games they give you, so I don't complain about those. We have three complete road games back to back to back. We're a little banged up. Um, some things are happening, and it just that's just the way it is, but we have to be mentally tough. I, I don't accept excuses from me, so you know I don't accept excuses from them. There's no excuses. That's the games we have to play. So I think while it's a factor, it's a non-factor. It's not anything that we should be worried about. We have to play the games that are on the schedule. That's what it is, so we do it. Uh, no, I've been talking to the gals, and, and you know, it's going to say the same thing to you. They're going to want to kill you. I mean, you know, you, you, like, you injured their quarterback. You guys, if you beat them, they may not be out of the playoffs, but it's a, it's a big, it's not, if you can say must win at, the, at game four, it's kind of a must win for them. So how are you keeping these guys, you know, with their heads to the, with the you know, heads of the grindstone and, and focused? Um, mostly I try to keep them focused on what it is we do, but I also make them aware of desperate teams are dangerous. They always are. Um, the, the teams that are desperate play above their heads, and this team is its a storied franchise. They've been around for a long time. The Seattle Majestic has been here, so they have a history. They know what they're working with. They understand what's going on, and they are definitely going to want to, to exact some revenge. Um, what we have to do is match that level of intensity to start with because that adrenaline rush lasts for about a quarter, and then after that it settles into technique. Who has the better play called who's executing better that's what it comes down to mm -hmm. so if we can you know negate that initial energy burst that they have out of the first quarter or so and if we're still even then we have an opportunity to do the things that we normally do most of those games when they when they're revenge games like that are lost in the very first part of it because that uh, you know the momentum gets going they build up their level of confidence they understand what's going on and for them I can understand it they've been around a long time this team was 0 six last year and now you know this team's beating them and they're three and oh well you know I don't I can't speak to what was happening last year. I'm a new guy. This is a new team. It's a new direction. It's a new year. So we're going to get after it, and we'll just wait and see what happens. You've already played them once, so you've got game footage on them. How much of that are you going to be looking at and counting on, or is it more their later game? Well, they've only actually played one other game. Right. Um, it's it's a Rolodex. Um, not only do I look at the game that I have on film of us against them a couple of weeks ago, I look at from 2018, 2017, 2016. Um, you learn to pick up tendencies and, and things that, that coaches do. Um, the players change in and out, and teams are different from year to year, but tendencies are generally the same. So, you know, what they do on first down is generally what they do on first down. What they do on third down, when it's, you know, they're down or when they're up is typically what they do. So I don't discard any amount of information. All of it's there. I just take a, you know, some with a grain of salt. Now, there are some things that we did to them last time that they played that I wanted to do to them specifically. So the counterpunch comes this week. Mm -hmm. So the second time they see me, and if there's a third time that we see them, which is probably likely, there's a counterpunch to that. So I set up things in the first game, I'll do things in the second game, and there are more things to do in the third game. Great. Uh, you had the gals uh, not in pads this week. All, all week long, you, you took them out of pads. Why was that? Um, I typically don't take teams out of pads, but this, again, it was a brutal schedule. It was four games in a row. Um, and the game that we played against the uh, Rebellion was a physical game because there was some um, shared history there. And, you know, when you're in close proximity like that, it creates, creates resentment. And that was a physical game. And then the next game we played, although that team was small, that team was physical. So uh, I, I wanted to get them out of pads, let them heal up. We got some bumps and bruises that need to be healed. Um, and, and we wanted to take some time to back up a step. Um, reintroduce some things on offense and defense and making sure that we have our P's and Q's where they're supposed to be. So once we got that thing done, I think, you know, the finite details of what we went over this week, and it was not necessary for passing it. 
Uh, what was their reaction on Tuesday? What were they like? I mean, you know, the first time you said, I've never known you to not talk after a game. Uh, it shocked me when I got here and Havoc said, coach didn't even talk to us. Uh, so what was their reaction to you on Tuesday? Um, the reaction was fine. I made a specific um, point to clarify why I was upset and I didn't speak and, and let them know that it had nothing to do with them. I know that they're working hard. I know that they're giving me maximum effort. I, I know that they, you know, they want to be good and things are, are progressing in that way. But again, it's me. I'm out. The buck stops with me. I'm just that type of coach. I, I don't, whatever Whatever happens is in my control, and I, I always think things that way. So when they're not producing over three games now, that's a trend. That's not you know just a fluke or something that happened. I have to find what it is that I'm doing wrong, correct it, and get the message to them so it filters down. That's just how I believe. So I was so frustrated that I, the best thing for me to do was not to speak. It wasn't that I was angry with them. It was just mm -hmm. I didn't need to speak at that time. So that, their action was pretty good. I explained to them what was going on, and they seemed to you know, exhale because I, mean, you know, I, I understand the power that that carries. I had told them that before that I'm that way. I don't accept excuses for myself, but that also means I don't accept excuses from you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how that works. And there's a symbiotic relationship there. There's a trust that's built. And hopefully they understand no more going forward. When I'm in that way, when I'm in that mood, it's like, okay, he's he's filtering his own self to try to make sure that we can be better. And, and hopefully it goes forward that way. Well, you know, uh I'm a little worried. You know, any team that goes three and zero like that in the beginning, especially with a lot of rookies, you think, oh God, they're going to get overconfident. And I got to tell you, the uh, players I've been talking to, you, your, your message is getting through. Because when I'm asking them, they, they both are like, you know what? We're going to worry. We don't worry about Seattle. We got to worry about what we do. So that should make you feel good. Well, anytime they're repeating the things you say, you, you, it makes you feel good. You're, you're getting there, and that's the right thing to do because we, uh, while we are three and zero. We are nowhere near operating the level of efficiency that I'm accustomed to. Yeah. Um, there is a, a, a better level to get to. There's a, a deeper knowledge that we can have, and there's a better performance mark that we can hit. Right. And so if I can get them to see that, and then they'll per, they're will they always pursuing that. If you're pursuing that, then you don't have time to worry about all the, the noise that's going on about, you know, they were 6 and they're putting it into, you know, publications that we have to see okay yeah. take your little jab yeah. that's fine yeah. you still got to play me on the field yeah. words don't score a tackle uh, i like that uh this is coach tim holmes words do not score a tackle well hopefully your bobcats will good luck coach thank you very much good to see you guys